there's a guy in Indiana. His name is Don Rainwater. Great guy. Known him for a long time. I don't know him well. Um, and he's running against a guy named Eric Holcomb and a Democrat named Woody Myers. Many, many connections uh, to here to unpack. So we're not going to spend a lot of time on this, but I just want you to be aware of this because some exciting things are going to be taking place soon. Um, so Eric Holcomb is a guy that's former head of the state party of the Indiana GOP, former chief of staff to Mitch Daniels, uh, who was governor of Indiana. And, and when I was executive director of the um, the the Libertarian Party of Indiana, it was Eric Holcomb who invited me to come meet with him and Mitch Daniels, who is a very libertarian leaning Republican, uh, wanted to they found a loophole in the law and it said that state commissions had to be filled out by members of two parties. Well, Mitch being the bright man that he is said, well, the libertarians qualify. Why are we appointing Democrats? And so, uh, the current governor, Eric Holcomb called, uh, my boss at the time, Sam Goldstein and I to, to, uh, uh, his office. And we sat and had a great conversation, Eric Holcomb, um, and current Congressman Jim Banks and uh, former Treasurer Richard Mordock are the only three state officials that had ever asked when I was the executive director for those four years to, to meet with us because they wanted to know what libertarians thought. So um, nothing nothing bad personally. I mean, at least Eric Holcomb was willing to, to – to, now he's had a rough year. So with the, uh, with the coronavirus, he has – Followed the Donald Trump CDC guidelines, implemented lockdowns, into, implemented anti-mask laws, and ooh, uh, this guy was going to cruise to re-election probably at 60-70%. He has the president's coattails. This is a deeply red state. This is a straight ticket voting state. Yep. This is a um, – he had millions and millions of dollars. He has an opponent in Woody Myers, who is not a nut job, not a crazy person, very accomplished professionally person, which I'll get to in a moment. Uh, and Woody Myers is a doctor running against him. Okay, so Woody Myers ran for Congress, lost to Andre Carson, and is kind of the sacrificial lamb because the state Democrats, after Joe Donnelly lost in 2018 to Mike Braun, the state Democratic Party is effectively the third party in the state of Indiana. The libertarians have, at this point, <laughs> more, more going. Uh, so, uh, Woody Myers, if you remember, and you should go check out this episode of We Are Libertarians, it's The Cost, Rachel's Story. We talked to Woody, our friend Woody, and Woody was the father of Rachel, who uh, unfortunately died at the hands of the state prison system because they had outsourced prison health to um, Corizon. And uh, Woody will actually be on Rob Kendall's radio show on WIBC tomorrow, and I'm going in with him to, to appear because Woody, in that conversation, um, Rachel sold two pills for her boyfriend, and it was an undercover cop, got sentenced to 16 years in prison, and died because of a complicated blood disease because of the neglect of the state prison system. The CEO of Corizon, at the time, the company that presided over the wrongful death of Rachel Wood was Woody Myers. Woody, our friend Woody, I'll call him Claude, calls me, who says, you know, I saw you helped Rupert Rupert's gubernatorial campaign, nobody in the media, nobody in the political establishment will take me seriously. Will you tell my story? Greg and I went out, talked to him, and, and we told that story of the true cost of government. This guy didn't know what happened, how his daughter died until we had someone translate the notes and explain how his daughter died. Fortunately, he has gone on. He, he didn't want to sue, and I'm the one, Mr. Libertarian over here, who encouraged him to sue the state. To, to sue these companies because I said, if you want justice for your daughter, telling the story will not matter unless you have the court records, the discovery, and you make these people pay. He's won a couple of lawsuits. He's got a civil lawsuit still fighting after all these many years. And we're going to have a follow-up episode that I'm going to grab from Rob and I'll post in the feed. Um, but Woody Myers running for governor on the Democratic side is the head of that company that wrongfully killed 
our friend uh, Claude's daughter. Uh, and so now Don Rainwater's running against him. All right. Rainwater's the libertarian candidate. He has been getting a ton of grassroots support, quite frankly, for many of the people that I pick on. But okay, I'll take it, right? Uh, and the anti-mask crowd has really, thanks to Rob Kendall, who will, who will be on soon, Rob Kendall has taken up Don Rainwater, and I thought Rob was an idiot taking on a current sitting governor who has the complete command and control of the state GOP because he was the former executive director of the state party, former Senate candidate, former chief of staff of a governor. This guy has been to every nook and cranny of the state of Indiana. And he, uh, Rob Kendall's a Republican radio show host at the largest uh, conservative talk station in the state. And he starts picking on the governor. And I go, you pick on the Democrats. Like, this is Radio 101, you idiot. Like, you're an idiot if you start picking on the power, the, the, the party that makes up your base, your audience. Like, what are you doing? Turns out Rob's a genius, and I'm not, because Rob starts going after the governor, and COVID hits, and he wins the talk radio lottery, and then he starts driving people to Don Rainwater. And so now all the Tea Party types, all the people that, uh, you know, ha ha held the rally, the anti-mask rally from earlier in the year, started swelling around on rainwater and then our good friend abdul talk radio show host editor of indiepolitics.org does a poll the poll shows libertarian don rainwater at 24 percent. it shows the infallible eric holcomb at 36 percent. it shows the democrat at 30 percent, woody myers the poll then gets taken to big money within the libertarian movement and Don Rainwater got a $100,000 donation yesterday, raised $26,000 three days before that. To put that into, con into context, the biggest vote getter and the biggest money candidate was Rupert Bonham in 2012, who ran for governor uh, as a libertarian. He had 70 some thousand dollars with an additional 30,000 of in-kind contributions. So that's, so Don has effectively raised $100,000 more than Rupert did. And Rupert had a massive – now, Rupert almost lost uh, – Rupert almost cost the election for Mike Pence, the current governor or the current vice president. Mm -hmm. Mike Pence almost lost that initial run for governor in 2012 because he was uh, disliked by many of the Mitch Daniels Republicans in this state. And then um, – and they didn't trust him, and, and he's Mike Pence, and he had didn't have a great reputation amongst the people of Indiana because he's he's an ideologue, right? Three more weeks. Everybody estimates that three more weeks, and John Gregg, the Democrat, would have beat him. Rupert gets 4 to 5% in that race. Now, libertarians don't steal votes, but what happens is that libertarians and libertarian candidates pull from Republicans and Democrats at an even rate but 90, 80% of their vote comes from independents or people who were not going to vote at all, have never voted. They just see a choice that they like. But if you have disaffected Republicans and Democrats that swell that percentage up, then it, it can cost other candidates some much needed support. And that's happening with Rainwater. 30, when you have an electorate that gives 24% in that poll to Rainwater, that's a lot of Republicans and Democrats defecting from the other two parties to the Libertarian. Now, I'm hearing rumors that there's some even better polls out there that are not being released. So stay tuned for that in the coming days. Um, but you should tune in to the Indiana gubernatorial race. You should donate to Donald Rainwater's campaign. You should volunteer if you're a Hoosier for that campaign. Get involved. Pay attention to it because it looks like it could be a very significant race. And, um, you know, we will hopefully talk to, to Don because it doesn't look like it was a fluke poll. It looks in, in Indiana is a very independent minded state. It, it went for Obama twice. It's gone for it's going to go for Trump, Trump twice. In 2007, we had a guy named uh, Greg Ballard defeat Bart Peterson. 
Well, Bart Peterson was the Democratic mayor, popular. Everybody was going to vote for him. It was a sure thing. The the sacrificial Republican just stepped up, named Greg Ballard. Nobody paid attention to the dude other than Abdul. Ha- interviewed him a few times. And then the guy wins, and everybody goes, oh, who's this guy again? <laughs> so uh, Indiana has a way of upsetting its political establishment when they feel that they have been treaded upon because it's a very libertarian state. When I was executive director of this uh, of the Indiana Libertarian Party, we continu- continuously had a 5% base. Um, I'm not sure what the base is now, but it's it's a five percent uh, base, which is a huge jumping off point for libertarians. So stay tuned. It's going to be uh, a race to watch. And I've been talking to several people and gathering info and looks like it could be a 2007 upset. And I'm not talking the Democrat beating the Republican. I'm talking rainwater may come in second or first. So that's what I'm hearing. Um, now, that's coming from Libertarian Party sources, so they're optimistic, of course. You know, who knows? Uh, uh, here's the thing about Libertarian polling that you need to understand on September 26, 2020, with six weeks to go. Mm-hmm. Libertarian Party candidates poll at 7 to 12% generally across the country. But then they settle at 1% to 3%, 4% of the vote. Why is that? Because people poll aspirationally a lot of times (laughs) um, or polls are not formulated correctly. Like, for instance, we have three automatic choices in Indiana. There will be three choices for governor on the ballot in Indiana, Mm -hmm. three choices for president. In Indiana, when they poll for governor, you'll get polls that will leave the libertarian off the poll. Well, that doesn't reflect the choice in the ballot box. So therefore, this is an inaccurate poll that should be discarded immediately. Mm -hmm. If you don't accurately reflect the choices on the ballot, then you have an inaccurate poll. All right. But when they're included, they tend to to increase. And that is because of structural problems within the electoral system in the United States. We have straight ticket voting here, which means you can lazily walk in and just hit the the party button. Well, I I don't want that. I want people. I want people to. If if I were dictator of this democracy, you would have to write in the name accurately of the candidate you're voting for. You misspell the name of the candidate, then you don't. Get, it doesn't count. You should be that informed when you're going to vote, not lazily just like literally the the straight party ticket. It is a a holdover from the illiterate America from the 1800s. Like that's the, there's a device. Uh, the Democrats are represented by a picture, uh, a rooster here in Indiana, and it's because th- they would literally go out and do you want to vote for the Democrats and hold up a rooster, or do you want to vote for the Republicans and hold up uh, God only knows. But that's where like the Republicans and the donkeys and the the porcupines and all that stuff comes from illiteracy. I'm not encouraging that. <laughs> Tired of the illiteracy. 